you are the editor of your thoughts. So the way that I think about it, your brain gives you a thought and you say, thank you for your input. And then you edit your thoughts and you ask these two questions. And I can honestly tell you, this is at the core of what helped me really shift. The first question is, is this thought true? Because a lot of these thoughts are just not, and are not rooted in reality. For something to be true, you need to have facts to support it. What's up everybody and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. A lot of what's glorified in popular culture, not only with the hustling, is just the effortlessness of which success comes to a select few. And we don't often hear about the trials and tribulations and the toll success has on friends, family, relationships, etc. And when I think about an awesome human, I think a lot about the human part. And that's left out of these awesome stories of success. And it's very easy to see someone else look up to them and not realize that they're making the same mistakes. They started right where you started and they're going to keep making those mistakes. And one of the biggest things that I took away from the book is how you talk to yourself and rewriting and editing that conversation. Because many of us have a one-way conversation. We just listen to all those thoughts and they take over our body and our emotions and our actions and all of a sudden, we're off the road, we're burning out. So what do you mean by editing those thoughts and, and changing the way that we talk to ourselves? Yeah, I think that's probably the core, if I had to pick, there's many core themes in the book, but it's. It perhaps for me was the core kind of mindset shift is the recognition that your brain does like the thoughts your brain gives you are not accurate representation of objective reality. They're not. It's just not the, the, the case. Our brain has a lot of filters, right? Our thoughts are filtered by things like we all have a negativity bias. We're all much more sensitive to anything that's wrong because anything that's wrong signifies possible danger. Your brain, I like that this is like a great reminder. Your brain doesn't care about your success, your achievement, or your happiness. Your brain just wants to keep you safe. That's it. So your brain is here to help you survive. And so it's got this negativity bias. So you, we overblow everything that's wrong or could be wrong. And we ignore a lot of good stuff, which increases stress. Your brain has a filter of uh, a fear, right? So if anything is uncertain, your brain hates uncertainty. We humans would prefer severe physical pain than uncertainty. They've done a lot of research. So your brain starts to make up a lot of worst case scenarios. Again, not objective reality. Your brain has a filter of, it loves patterns. So if something happened before, when any similar situation comes up, your brain's like, oh, oh, I know, I know, this is how it's gonna be. I can get confirmation bias much more. So the biggest recognition is, you are the editor of your thoughts. So the way that I think about it, your brain gives you a thought and you say, thank you for your input. And then you edit your thoughts and you ask these two questions. And I can honestly tell you, this is at the core of what helped me really shift. The first question is, is this thought true? Because a lot of these thoughts are just not, and are not rooted in reality. For something to be true, you need to have facts to support it. So. As an entrepreneur, you know, I've, I've run several companies. I mean, the stress that we feel as entrepreneurs and as leaders, it's nonstop, right? So what I remember, I would just obsess about like, oh my God, what if this, this product is not gonna work? This release is not gonna work. What if it doesn't, like those thoughts aren't free. They drain my energy. They prevent me from making good decisions. So ask yourself, is this thought true? Like, how do I know the product is not good? How do I know my presentation won't go well, right? So for something to be true, you need facts. And the second question, it's perhaps even the more important, is this thought helpful? If I go along with this thought, does it help me work through whatever the situation in the best way? Does it help me struggle less so I waste less energy? Does it help me honor this moment in the best way? Does it help me serve whoever I'm in service of in the best way? So these two questions, is this thought true and is this thought helpful? They're really life-changing in terms of, first of all, you just start to not take so much of the bullshit that your brain feeds and you're constantly filtering, but it allows you to make better decisions, both about your own energy and well-being, but also about whatever it is you're building. You can make them from a place of clarity 
this is how it is versus from a place of fear or fear of uncertainty or all these different filters that the brain has. I think it's incredibly important to have this dialogue with yourself and challenge yourself, but also allow these thoughts to come out so you, and, and write them down so you can actually see how ridiculous a lot of this stuff actually <laughs> yes. is. If if you allow it to to, to continue to, to, to get out of hand and you feed those thoughts. And you m mentioned one of our need for survival and our and our and how our brain is interpreting everything for that. And then you throw in our biological need to procreate on top of the, the survival mechanism. And we have all kind of firing of our brain with all kind of bizarre thoughts and the rationalizations and the mental gymnastics that we come up with because of both of those biological needs it's crazy and i think for a lot of people they have to be able to surrender to the idea that your brain uh though incredible as it is for everything that it is able to do uh it's without guidance it's it will wildly go off the reservation one of my favorite quotes and i don't actually i it was in my first book and i we didn't come up with the actual source it's conflicted but one of my favorite quotes is your brain is a terrible master but your brain is an awesome servant. And awesome is definitely my substitution. I think it's great, so I'm just using awesome. But your brain is a terrible master, but a great servant. And it's exactly what we're talking about. So if you just, and I love that you said about writing things down. You know, there's a great author, Michael Singer, his book, The Untethered Soul and Surrender Experiments are two of my favorites. And he has this thing where he's like, I realized there's a crazy roommate in my head. And he's like, I started writing down the stuff that he says. And I was like, oh my God, if this person lived with me, I'd kick them out. And yet they're oh. in my head. And so, <laughs> you know, it's like completely crazy. And so I think it is important, like do this practice. I, I did this when I was starting to practice this early on, I would just write down everything I'm thinking about. And I would look at it and be like, wow, really crazy. But th to your point, just to, recognize that your brain, the, the analogy I use in, in my work is your brain is a really scared child. And to me, that really, really helps. And for everyone listening, you don't have to have your own kids. We all know what little kids are like, right? They, one minute they're happy, the next minute they're yelling, the next it's a tantrum, the completely illogical, everything is the biggest deal, right? We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. So your brain is a scared child and you, the greater, wiser you, be the grandparent. Because we all have like the grandparent, they're wiser, they're calmer, but they're warm, right? One of the things that I don't advise is don't yell at your brain. Don't get mad at your brain. It's part of you. Be the grandparent. What does a grandparent do when the kid's freaking out? Well, they sort of sit on the floor with them. You know, Johnny, to your point, they acknowledge they're like, okay, so you spilled your cereal and you think it's the worst thing in the world and there'll never be cereal again. I understand that's upsetting, but let's think about it. Could we get more cereal? Is it really true that there's no more cereal, right? So to me, that's the analogy. And also because I think a really important quality, and this is something I also talk a lot about is compassion, self-compassion, which then goes, so have self-compassion, like don't pummel yourself for having these ridiculous thoughts. You're human, that's your brain. Have compassion in this practice of being the grandparent and editing your thoughts so they're more helpful so you can move forward. And when I was younger, it was, I, for all the negative talk that I would have when my inner critic would speak up, I would always rationalize it as, well, it's my thoughts. So there's got to be something there. There's got to be some kernel of truth that is where this is originating. And, and I allowed that to happen. And of course, as I had gotten older and begun doing research on this very topic, I realized that's just not the case at all. And again, that was me bullshitting myself in order to protect these thoughts because my brain was trying to protect me from putting myself outside of my comfort zone where all the bad things happen. But as we all grow up and know, it's where all the good stuff is. That's right. I just want to actually say one thing to what you said. Those thoughts sometimes do have a seed that could be helpful to us, right? But it's about removing that 
judgment, the pummeling, and getting to the seed, right? So, you know, if you're working on launching a product or a company or a side hustle and you're lost in a lot of self doubt, this is something I do a lot of work with because, again, I'm a Russian Jew. I think like we have a black belt in doubt, you know? Like in my family, it's really not cool to feel confident about anything because then you're going to curse it, you know? That's a whole thing. So self doubt is a thing. So I, I do. I've done a lot of work on self doubt. And so you know, for example, let's say you know you want to start a company or launch a product, and you're like, oh my god, what if it doesn't work? I'm not good enough, right? So what could be the seed there? Well, this if you edit your thoughts, you realize, well, the truth is, I'm I'm scared. My brain is scared of what others will think of disappointing others. And then there's a helpful action in that. You could be like. All right. Well, let me do a little more research on the market, or let me talk to some more successful entrepreneurs, or let me remind my brain that you know what, I might fail. That is a possibility, but I know how to deal with disappointment. I've done these things, hard things before, and so there might be a seed there. But that's what we're doing when we're editing. We're getting to that useful part, and we're putting away all that other crap. That the only thing it does, it drains our energy, prevents us from making good decisions. And often creates that mental block that we actually, as you said, don't do the thing that is on the other side of comfort. Well, you have brought up this idea of editing our thoughts a few times now, so we might as well go ahead and lay that out for our audience so they can be in tune to what we're doing here. I, I shared the two questions at the core of it, right? So, is this thought true? Is it helpful? And I guess the other thing I want to mention, as you just said it, like that's why I got distracted, popped into my head. You know, often I hear from people when they do this practice, they're like, "Well, I think this thought is true, right?" Like I work with a lot of leaders and companies, and you know, imposter syndrome comes up a lot, right? Oh, I got this huge job, but everyone's about to find out that I'm not good enough for it, you know. And by the way, men and women, this idea that women have more imposter syndrome, I have now found it in my work. I work with a lot of male executives. I hear the same thing. And so I say to them, okay, well, let's edit your thoughts. Is this thought true? And they go, yes, I am convinced this is true. It is true. I know it's true. And so the reminder there is, what you think other people think is not fact. That's another filter. That's another idea. And so the, when we do this practice of is this thought true? Is this thought helpful? We actually, to use your expression, we have to drop our own bullshit in that, because you can answer the question like, yes, this thought is true. Yes. It's helpful. So another one I just want to address is self-criticism. Again, this is I grew up. You know, people in my family constantly criticize themselves and each other. I thought it was the only way to improve. A lot of people think that. Just for fun, there are zero studies that show that endless self-criticism helps you improve. Not one, not two, zero. But there are tons of studies that show that treating yourself with compassion actually helps you to work harder and improve. What is treating yourself with compassion? It's not saying to yourself, you know what, I am great the way I am, and I never have to change, and everything is amazing. No, that's what I thought it was. Like I thought it would make me this lazy sloth. Treating yourself with compassion, back to where we started this conversation, means you recognize, oh, I'm a human being. That means I mess up. That means I can't do things perfectly. How can I treat myself in this challenging situation in a way that reduces struggle and suffering? Because guess what? When I reduce my struggle and suffering, I have more energy, more intellectual and analytical capacity to actually figure out how to move forward. I have more motivation, and so again, I mentioned these parts of editing your thoughts because it's very easy to do that practice and sort of bullshit your way through it, and then be like, "Yes, Natalie, actually, this thought is helpful. Thinking that I am fat and ugly and unsuccessful, and I should be further along with my career, and I'm a failure, it is helpful because it motivates me." And so we have to kind of challenge ourselves on that too, to get to the seed, because that is not what motivates us. Endless self-criticism is not what motivates us.